Midjourney version 4 is making things no one thought would have been possible just a year ago. I've been making videos on AI experiences for just about that long, and I just realized all of the art I need for my YouTube channel can be made in Midjourney. I am so excited to share this with you. My profile picture, my cover art, my thumbnail faces, my splash screens, my arrows, icons, and everything in between is something Midjourney version 4 is capable of producing. Let's go one by one, talk about what's possible, how to do it, and look at the results. Playing around with just a few features, I was able to completely overhaul my channel, and I'm so excited to share it with you guys. Let's get started. I opened up trying to overhaul my profile picture. This is what I was starting with. I had a tree icon that I generated in Disco Diffusion a long while back, and it's cool and abstract and a little artsy, and it seems kind of fun. I like the eyes in it, um, and I wanted it to be like AI-generated tree. Glib a tree should be smiling, kind of glib, and that's kind of the vibe I was going for, but this doesn't really look like a character, and I think I really wanted the tree icon to be a tree character, and so what I did is I took this logo as an image prompt because I kind of liked the style and vibe it had, the colors and things like that. I didn't really want to just like sacrifice what I currently had for my brand. And then also I wanted it to be a little bit more human-like, so I took a picture of my own face. I used both of these as an image prompt in Midjourney. If you don't know how to use an image prompt in Midjourney, image prompts work like you put the image URL at the front of your prompt. You can add as many as you like, so you can do image one, space, and then image too, and it just works like that. I just upload the photos to Discord in my Midjourney bot chat, and then I right-click, copy image address. You're looking for the one that probably ends in .png. If you see that, it's probably the right one. That image should point to your image, and then Midjourney will see it when it's actually creating the command. You can then put your actual text prompt, the actual normal mid-journey command that you do, or the mid-journey text you type after you do slash imagine, and then of course you can have any arguments you'd like to do. I was using v4 and upscale beta because I like as much resolution as I can possibly get, and I wasn't really after anything photorealistic for what you see in this video. And then I started generating. The first one I came up to was a huge improvement. Look how tree-like and human-like this looks. It's not as happy as I might have liked, and it doesn't have like a technology -y feel, which I was kind of hoping for. I thought the best way to do this might have been glowing eyes. I tried adjusting the prompt and getting it closer and closer until I was eventually getting something I liked. These glowing eyes were actually up in the leaves of the tree, and then the regular eyes were normal. So I kept looking until finally I was starting to get something that was a little bit closer. Smiling tree with the glowing eyes and it looks like a character with a face in front of it. Just very, very solid. Messed around with a little bit more and started getting something that looked a little bit more like a character and a little bit, you actually could see the whole tree. This may be closer to a logo feel, which is what I was really after. Um, and then, of course, this was spectacular. This was the smile, this was the eyes, this was the leaves, this was the colors. Really everything I was after was really visible in this one. But it still didn't look like a logo. And so I'm like, hmm, how do I go from here? But of course, image prompts, you don't have to just use your original images. You can actually use images you create in Midjourney as an image prompt. So starting from this image, I was able to start creating logo badge icons. And so that, that was a sort of a way to get something a little bit more logo badge icony that you might see on like a YouTube channel. <gasps> Crazy, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> um, and here we go. This is kind of what this is. Oh my God, I'm peeking so much. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Let me just turn you down a little bit. Maybe the sound will be better for the rest of the video. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I also did took another image just off Google for like the shape of the logo I was after. I just found like tree logo and decided to use that to kind of give Midjourney something to go out off of. The first few were a little bit too close to that image, but I st kept adjusting my prompt. This one I liked, the glowing eyes were there, the smile was there, but again, the like tree branches were just too much like the image prompt that I had. Um, and this one, I lost the Glibitry vibe, but it does kind of look like the logo I was hoping for. You can imagine it saying Glibitry right there instead of Paya Papaya Tiats. 
because that's a fun word. Um, but I kept going, kept looking, and finally I was getting something that was like really close to what I liked. This was good colors, my glowing eyes looked good, it felt like a technology glib a tree, um, but I don't know, I was missing the green leaves, I felt like this is just trunks, and so I asked a little bit more, kept looking, kept messing around. With another prompt and going for that really bold green, suddenly the this was the logo I found, and immediately I'm like, that is the one. Look at the green foliage, the tree, the eyes kind of hovering within, it's very much like this is a kind of magical, mystical, technology full tree and it just looks so so good i was like this is the logo i cleaned it up a little bit so this first one it wasn't actually quite black on this outside and it's harder to use that for a logo really that's the only change i made these actually look almost identical when you flip between them and that's kind of the point i didn't change anything mid journey created this logo for me <laughs> um and yeah going from this one to that you can actually see such a huge difference of just like how good this logo looks. And I, I, I really, really love it. And you can really see the resemblance too. It like used the eyes, it used the green leaves, and it really turned into exactly the badge I was after. This is the logo you saw on the thumbnail, and I was so, so pleased with it. Speaking of thumbnails, I actually created the thumbnail face in mid-journey as well. We've been talking about image prompts this whole time, and image prompts are fantastic at actually turning your face into whatever you'd like. Not just a logo, but even just versions of your face making a more clickable version of it. Inspired a little bit by like Mr. Beast thumbnails, you know, where he's like in a coffin for 50 day or 50 hours and he looks all like torn and it's, it's washed a little bit, but also the emotions he has in his face is really expressive. That's the style I was after when I created this prompt here and Oh my god, it looks fantastic. Like, that's clearly me. It's clearly a thumbnail. It's, you know, it's clearly me glib a tree in front of the camera, but also the face is just so, so clickable and expressive, and the eyes are so big and wide, and it's just really everything that you want out of a thumbnail face that I couldn't possibly replicate if I was just standing in front of my webcam going, Aah! And just turning the image prompt here, let me, let me pull, it, pull it up. I, I'm pretty sure I just used this same image here of me smiling, but I told Midjourney what the emotions should have been, and this one, I think I said surprised, and look at how surprised they look. Oh my god! <laughs> um, and you can do the same thing with anger. Yeah, I can't pull off being that angry, but of course, Midjourney knows what anger looks like, and it just emphasizes those that expression into the face. I don't know what's going on with the teeth there, but honestly, it's a cool and clickable thumbnail, and I might use things like this as I make further videos because partly because this is a mid-journey focused or AI art focused channel, so it's okay to use my AI art, but these are really fun and stylistic and interesting, excited or sad or just extremely happy, and whatever I want to do. There's a pog face I was trying to get it to do. Uh. Let's pog. Oh, oh, awesome! Pog! There we go. You don't have to do the style that I came up with either. This is kind of bold and very specific, but you can even do like a, a Pixar style if that's kind of how you want to do. It takes you in your, however your image looked and then applies the Pixar style to you. These all turned out a little differently. We'll go through the different emotions of like sad and extremely happy and angry and excited. Um, and like these are different people but they're all like based off of me the little like swooping hair and the you know brown and it just kind of like that's the shirt I was wearing at the time all of it kind of works and you can actually do whatever you want with these people you don't just have to like oh, make a thumbnail face but you can actually like put the person in whatever situation you want imagine like a story time youtuber going through and like explaining their day explaining their time and having mid-journey just put them in the scenes of the things that they were doing you have some like visual reference of what's happening because they're talking about their day their week their adventures and suddenly oh yeah when i was chased through a forest by killer robots and there it is you have being chased by the forest <laughs> through the forest by killer robots easy um the other thing i do on my channel and so i might not do use this like story time vibe unless i'm doing like an ai dungeon story where i want to go a little crazy but 
you can actually create these like, I, I use this like splash art, these gradients, and sometimes I use like stock video, but behind the art that I generate or behind the thing that I'm doing or I'm writing text, I try to have something visual and entertaining. You can have like things sweeping by this like splash screen. Here's a gradient of a comet and it looks so, so good. As a, and you could imagine just like using this behind something else that I'm doing. Oh, I'm showing you a AI generated lion, but behind it is this like glowing comet. It looks really good. S similarly, with this like explosion of colorful flames. You can imagine this exploding behind something that I was doing. Um, this is, of course, is like based off this sim very similar prompt as the Dolly 2 powder explosion prompt on a black background. But uh, like you can do absolutely whatever you'd like. Gradient of abstract colors or literally like an abstract geometric piece and just like whatever you're going for. I did a like a laser show and all of these things could be really useful as just a backdrop to what's happening on my channel and I will probably use any and all of these as well as more that I continue to generate from here on out because they're just so, so fantastic. Just ask for what you want and you get it. It's easier and more effective than like searching through stock photos. Speaking of this like, oh, you can use this throughout your channel. Another thing that I'll be using are these borders. You can actually prompt Midjourney for the this border that I've been using around my face for this entire video while I've been showing you the art. Oh my God, like the lasery light show, but also it just looks so, so good. I just edited out all the black, which if you ever use Photoshop is a very easy thing to do and suddenly you have something that looks really good around you rather than just a simple border. You can do the same thing with a rectangle, right? If you don't want a circle, you can have like this vibe and you can stretch it to be exactly the shape and size that you'd like and it looks really, really good. In addition to these like borders and things that you might use as assets within your channel, similarly, I have assets within my thumbnail. I created this arrow where uh, you actually like would want to point at some, it's like a really clickable and entertaining and fun and cartoony swooping arrow that I couldn't get exactly what I wanted off a of stock photo site. It was like hard to look to like search for the arrow and this vibe, but of course Midjourney can create a unique one just for me as I ask for and it looks fantastic. I think it pretty probably contributed along with the thumbnail face and the papery splash art that I recolored um, and made a really effective thumbnail that might be why you clicked here and watched the video with me. Thanks for stopping by. Of course, you can also create a subscribe button, but Midjourney can't spell, so it ends up saying subritu, subritu. Uh, hang on, let me run a bit. According to my YouTube analytics, only 4% of you are actually subritude to my channel. Go ahead and check and see if you subritude. Click that button right now. It's free, and you can always change your mind later. There you go. Ran a bit. Of course, that, uh, that bell icon... Also AI generated. I AI generated in a grid. This is really useful if you're ever generating an icon. You ask for a grid of four and you're much more likely to get one that is the vibe you want. And you can actually use them together. So I have this like bell off and bell on and you can kind of use both of them in here and it's just they like they work well together. And probably the best way to get icons that you like is generating them in a grid like this and you can just ask for three by three, two by two, depending on the size and complexity and what mid journey is able to make for you. But honestly, all of these are so, so fantastic. And you can just imagine the, the breadth of things you're able to do with mid journey. And it's not even going into just like the regular artistic ability of mid journey, which can create just about anything. I was really focused on the very narrow subset of like things I might need for my brand as a YouTuber and Midjourney hit everything out of the park. It was just fantastic. These logos and honestly, all of the ones I showed you, not just the ones I selected, were really solid logos and I was able to like workshop them and get the ones that I wanted. On top of that, uh, these thumbnail faces I think will be great for actually making my thumbnails more clickable. Of course, that's all a little bit more complicated than just like, oh, big wide face means your thumbnails will get clicked on. But I think if I deliver my videos and this is a part of my brand, these thumbnails will be easy to spot from a mile away. And that's really what these things are for. 
Um, and really anything you could possibly want mid journey is just doing what you're looking for. I was really, really pleased with this and well, there's something else just around the corner. Stable Diffusion version two was just released. So maybe we'll be talking about that one in the next video. See you then. <laughs>